All right, um, let's, let's get started. Um, sorry, I think we're starting a few minutes late. Um, so today there are um, two things I want to do, two things I want to cover. Um, the first, this, which I just didn't know what to call it, so it's like, oh, by the way, like two little things I sort of wanted to pick up from the past. Um, things I've noticed people have been struggling with in the homework. And so I, so um, two little things to start off with, and then we'll spend the rest of the day talking about flux integrals. And we introduced flux the last time. It's the amount of fluid flowing through a surface. And um, we'll talk, uh, we'll just do a bunch of examples of how to calculate and think about different types of flux integrals. So that'll be the top, that'll be today. Um, I'll be available after class, um, probably until around 11.30, when I'll eat a quick lunch and then go prepare for my next class. Um, and then 3.30 to 4.30, I can stick around a little later today um, if, if need be. And then um, I believe, so next week is week nine, and we'll be in chapter 20, which is the last chapter of the book, which is, I think is really exciting. So we're, I think we're on track for sort of a nice smooth finish in the course. Um, we will need to go back and pick up chapter 13.4, which is um, cross products. So, so, um, so we'll do that at some point in the midst of chapter 20. Um, but that's where things stand. Uh, OK, questions? All right, so two oh by the ways. Um, so let's say somebody hands you a vector field, which is something that's been happening a lot lately. And then like you have to do things to the vector field. So here's a vector field. And suppose we want to um, find an f such that del f is f. So this is also something that's been happening in your life recently. Um, and so you've learned that um, this doesn't, this actually sometimes isn't even possible. And so you could do the curl test to check to see if it's possible. And um, the y derivative of this term is 1. The x derivative of this term is 1. So um, we know this task is possible. And I guess it could be good or bad news. Because like, if you prove that it's not possible, then like the problem's over. But here it is possible, so you know you have some work to do. So let's actually sort of do that work. So I'm looking for an f. So we've right, we got f of x, y. That's what we're looking for. And all right, so del f is f x i plus f y j. So I'm going to like say, OK, well, f x has to be that. f y has to be that. No big deal. So f x is y plus 1 f y is x. So what you've been doing is you sort of look at this first one, and you do a little antiderivative. And you say, OK, if this is the x derivative of f, what's f? So look at this. So the antiderivative of that with respect to x is going to give me? And then, so maybe, so maybe it's plus other stuff. Because this isn't really the whole story. You've got the x antiderivative, but now we also need to get the y antiderivative. <coughs> and um, all right, so f, y equals x. So I kind of need to make sure that this is true also. And when you start to think about this, you need to remember that this is still here. Um, so I, you could say, like, like, do I need other stuff? So let's take what we already have and take the y derivative of that. So I'm going to do o 
OS is sort for other stuff. It's not a standard thing. I just made that up. Um, so let's see. What's the y derivative of, of this and of that? And of, derivative of other stuff is other stuff derivative, I guess. But I look at this and I'm like, oh, I'm psyched. That's what I wanted it to be. I don't even need any other stuff. So f of x, y is y, x plus x, end of story. So I think the examples that we did in class, I always try to do simple examples because I feel like if this is like time to do an example and this is complexity, like things can kind of go like this, right? You just, you just make things a little bit more complex, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, it's going to take an hour to do this example. So I'm like trying to operate in here, but I might have been just a little bit too, I might have done examples that were a tiny bit too simple. So I always think I did one where like the x and y's were just completely separate. So like this had all x's and this had all y's, and so you just didn't have, there was like no crosstalk between them. But when they're mixed up a little bit, um, when you have a y in your x antiderivative, when you go to find the y antiderivative, you need to take that into account. So I know that I've seen that that's been a little bit confusing, for, understandably, for a couple of people on the homework because we haven't done an example like that. So that's the first O, by the way. Oh, sorry, you moved just the beginning. The, begin, the first topics are, by the way, <laughs> there are two by the ways. That's the first one. Um, <clears throat> The second one is I wanted to say a little bit more about parameterizing curves, because that's been um, tricky for some folks. Um, and that's very often, and that's, that's entirely normal. That's often the hardest part of doing um, one of these line integrals or applying Green's theorem or later applying other theorems is just parameterizing the curve around the edge. And so I wanted to do an example of that um, where I sort of present a method for doing that. Because I think my method has been like, Look at it and see. And some of you have not have found that to be not very methodological. And so here's um, a slight, maybe a slightly more methodological way. And so I sort of thought, like, wh when I like look at it and see, what am I doing? Maybe I can explain that more. So here's my attempt to explain that more. I think you will like this. Okay. So this is, um, by the way, number two. So let's say. Okay, drawings. One. What did I want this to go from? One, one, two, okay. Let's put this at a level where I'll be able to reach it. One, two, three. OK, so here's a line segment going from 1, 3 to 2, 5. And suppose, again, somebody's handed you a vector field, and then they say, Can do a line integral. You're like, OK, I've got to parameterize a curve. How do I do that? So um, let's write y as a function of x to write the equation of the line. So y equals mx plus b. And the slope of this is? Two. Yep, <laughs> there we go, two. Intercept is? Yep. So y equals mx plus b. OK, that's step one. Two.
So we're not done because we need to say what does t start at and what does t end at. But t is x. So what does x start at and what does x end at? Thus ends, oh, by the way, number 2. So I mean, so this is what I was doing when I was just sort of like writing the answers down, or in helping you like, oh well, it starts here, it goes there, blah blah. So this is sort of a recipe you can follow, if you're wanting. Not everybody was wanting a recipe, um, but if you wanted a recipe, this is a good recipe. So this will work if you can write y as a function of x, which most of the ones we're doing are little line segment things where that's not a problem. people feel about that. What if x doesn't just equal t? So it's always going to be the case of y for a question. Um, you, this, would work, this would work if you had a parabola, too. Okay. Yep. So this works for any, anything you can write like this. Um, if you had, where it wouldn't work is if you had, say, something like that that's not you can't write y as a function of x because it's double valued. Then you'll have to break it into two pieces or something. Or write x as a function of y. But anything where you can write it like this, you just say let, t be, let x equal t. That's my parameter. And then I can express y in terms of t, which is really in terms of x. And then I have it a line in a form where there's just sort of a single parameter that lets me do line integrals somewhat conveniently. OK, so let's go back to flux. And because I was feeling indecisive, I prepared two worksheets with probably like three hours of problems on them. We're not going to do them all today. <laughs> but we have a lot of choice in, in, in what we do. Maybe I'll start if. if um, should I, maybe I should do a flux example quickly and then just, yeah, then want to. OK, so let's see. So flux, let me say a few things about flux. Flux is, um, actually, where am I? Okay. There we go. So uh, let's see, so flux integral. of f through a surface s is f dot das. So, sorry, this chalk is starting to fail me. This only, this, what this dot product does is it only counts the part of the field that's straight through A. And so, and so we have a surface. We define the vector A as being perpendicular to the surface. And then this dot product just picks up the parts of fields that are sort of flowing directly through A. And um, I don't know why this ringer is on. OK. Um, so that was the example if we're trying, if we have butterflies flying left to right and we're trying to catch the butterflies, we should orient our butterfly net like this. We'll catch the most butterflies, or if the butterflies are flying right at me. Right, we get the most butterflies this way. We get less butterflies this way, and no butterflies this way. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, 
if this is a velocity field, it's just the amount of fluid flowing through. And so um, butterflies are many things. They're not fluid because they come in discrete little lumps, unlike, say, water. So um, we can look at the units here. This would be meters per second. Meters per second flowing across an area. That's going to give us meters cubed per second. That's going to give us volume per second. So that's another way, a non-butterfly way, probably a little more physically accurate way of thinking <coughs> about these things. Uh, OK. So I guess I'll do an example over here. All right. So uh, let's do a, let's do a rectangle of some sort. How should do we care how it's oriented? Just choose an orientation on the x. All right. So let's have it go from let's have it go from zero to two, and maybe we'll do so. Maybe we'll do the xz. So this is going to be my surface. And we need to choose an orientation for a surface, which way we want to think of it as positive. We, we can positive. positive. You're going to the, OK. So the negative y direction is going to be positive. So we want to know f dot dA over the surface. And we're going to need to choose. Um, an F so let's see let's like maybe do 900 or 90 sine x squared I plus 14 z cubed j. Uh, oops. Oh. Sorry. So I'm totally making this up. And like I can make it of anything I want here. It's not going to matter. Because we're only going to get, we've got some field, some crazy field flowing around. It's only the part of the, the component of the field that's flowing in this direction that's ever going to enter in. So in making up an example, we can choose the x component of the field and the z component to be totally anything, and it won't matter. So um, this could be you know, sine of log of x cubed. It's not going to matter. Um, this one, though, let's do, let's say this one is zx. Mm, no, let's do this z minus. 1 x. No, sorry. There we go. Okay. <coughs> so A, the, the vector, the direction of A is minus, it's going to be minus y hat. Mm -hmm, of course. Why does it not matter, for example, the z direction? If you have like 3k or like 5k, then that means that the function would only evaluate 5z, which means that you wouldn't win. 
you wouldn't even go through the surface that you're looking at, right? Like Cor correct. So. But how do you know that the values that you're ignoring for Z don't affect what you have in X or Y? Uh. Because z, x, and y are all independent. So the, idea, the picture here is every point x, y, z in space, there's a vector, there's a, there's a vector f. And that vector f has an x, y, and a z component. And this tells me how much of it's, how much of it's going up. But I don't care how much of it's going up, because I just want to know how much of it's going sideways. OK, so um, So I claim we've made progress. You were dubious about my claim, but let me assert why I think this is progress. So this is a flux integral. This is sort of this new weird thing. This is a two-dimensional inter uh, integral. This is just over a scalar. So this is similar to what we did two or three weeks ago. So similarly, like you have a line integral, and it's f dot dr, and you do all that stuff with t, and you take the dot product, and then you get an integral with respect to t. And so you take a line integral that's this new type of calc 3 integral, and you turn it into a calc 2 integral. I know, like having an integral to do rarely seems like progress, but I mean, it is. Here, we're taking a flux integral, and by doing the dot product, we've turned it into just an integral over an area. This is just a scalar. OK. Um, so now let's think about the surface, where this is. Um, everywhere on this surface, y is 0. This, is, this, is, this realization also is a form of progress. Um, so on surface. y equals 0. So this whole thing now becomes z. Uh, let's see. So we've got negative. So uh-oh. All right. So all right, this was a day I should have done this. OK. So this minus sign, that should be there. So I used up that one. And then. 0 minus 1 is minus 1 minus minus is plus. So this whole thing is just going to be z dA. So now I need to integrate over this surface, which is in the x and z direction. So this is going to be z dx dz. And what's z going to go from? Yep. And then x 0 to 2. Shall we do the integral just to get a number? It'll be satisfying. OK. So. Let's see. Um, antiderivative of z is zx. zx evaluated from 0 to 3 is 3z. This is going to be <coughs> 3 halves z squared from 0 to 2, which is going to be 12 halves, which is going to be 6. Change the answer, but the bounds are messed up. 
Really? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to change the answer, but... What's messed up? Well, dx is from 0 to 3, and so the same thing from 0 to 2. No, it's from 0 to 3. Dx no, is from... on the board, on the board. Yeah. What you wrote. Yeah. Yeah, you just So it doesn't matter. You can just, like... Just um, just no, no, it might matter. It's, it's going to matter. Okay. All right. Let's just. That's <laughs> where he's gonna go. All right. Z and we'll do it. We'll do Z first, and Z goes from zero to three, and X goes from zero to two. So then this is Z squared over two from zero to three, dx zero to two. This is nine halves dx from 0 to 2, which is going to be 9. OK. 50% bigger than the last answer. That's progress. <laughs> OK, so um, doing a flux integral can, you know, it boils down to a double integral most of the time. There's lots of um, letters and symbols and numbers to get lost in, as I just, just illustrated. But I think the thing to keep in mind is there's a very sort of physical geometric picture here. We're just capturing how much of this field F, think of it as flowing water, how much, or flying butterflies, how much of it flows through a certain surface per unit time. Um, and so as with a lot of these, a good picture helps. So you need to think, OK, what's the surface? What's the orientation on the surface? It's only going to pick out part of the vector field. It's only the part flowing through a particular surface. And then you need to ask yourself, OK, what's going on on that surface? And you end up with um, integral to do. So let's practice this. OK, so. <clears throat> So let's, let's step through these. Um, helpful, I think, to draw a, a cube so you know which way um, all the surfaces are oriented. And so the, what we're doing here, which is a standard thing in physics, is we have something oriented outward. So we want to know how much g is flowing out of this cube. So that's what, that's what we're asking. So given a field g, What's the net flux out of this cube? You could also ask into the cube, but usually we ask out of. So this drawing here is indicating the direction uh, of dA for all of these surfaces, just pointing outward. So for the top, which I called A, um, it's oriented upward. So that's going to be a K. So then when I do the dot product, I only want to know what part of the field is flowing up. And that's, that's just the up flowing part. That's just the k component. So these parts don't matter in the dot product. And so I'm just going to have a y um, term left. And now this is just an integral of y over an area. And the surface, this is this surface here. So I guess I would need to do this um, integral out. Why, since it's a square, we don't really have to, we don't have to argue about which comes first and which comes second. Um, so what am I integrating over? Y yeah, dy dx. Yep, so I've got to go that way. So, OK, so dy dx, dy dx, 0 to 2, y squared over 2, 0 to 2. Dx, that's 4. Eight. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's 2, and then it becomes 4. So it's 2 dx equals 4. Oh, 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 OK. Yeah. Sorry. 
two is four. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. Right, maybe I should like put some twos up here as well in case I need some of those. Okay. So now we need to do the um, flux coming out of this surface here. So the unit vector is minus k hat. It's going down. So when I do the dot product, I'm all, again, I only get the k component. x and y, I'm not interested in that. I just want to know what's flowing sort of perpendicular to the surface. So I do that, and I get the exact same thing with a minus sign. And I'm going to end up with the exact same integral, but with a minus sign. So through the top and the bottom, the same amount flows in as flows out. Um, notice it's not a constant field in that. I, so the field is stronger with y. So the, there's going to be a lot flowing out here, and in fact, 0 flowing out here when y is 0. So at the risk of totally messing up what turned out to be, in relative terms, a surprisingly nice diagram. Right, so we're integrating over a field like this, and we find out whatever it is, the total amount of water, the total amount of orange arrows flowing out is uh, 4. But then the total amount flowing in also happens to be 4. Because the field depends on y, it doesn't depend on z. Um, so it's going to be the same sort of picture. <coughs> okay. So let's go to this one. Now flowing out the left. So the, this surface, this was like the example we did earlier. It's here in the xz plane. Outward is oriented to the left. That's negative j hat. F, yeah. OK, OK. So then I'm going to dot. When I do the dot product, I only get the j part. The j part is minus 3. So I put this minus here, and then I have a minus 3 there. So that's, I didn't leave myself much room. That's going to be the integral of plus 3 over the surface. And that's a nice integral to do. It doesn't, it doesn't vary at all. So if you have a velocity of 3 over a square of 4, that's going to be 12. It's 3 times 4 is 12, OK. And here, this is just going to give you a minus 12. So the picture here is that, uh, let's see, minus 3, minus 3. So it's actually going to the left. Let's see. So it's a constant field to the left. And the same amount is flowing in as is flowing out. It doesn't change at all. It's just a, just a steady, steady stream. And yep. Okay. And so this one is positive because it's flowing out on the left. This is negative because it's flowing in on the right. OK, so let's do one more. And uh, E flowing out the bottom. No, nope, sorry, E flowing out the front. So that's going to be a direction of positive i. Again, I do the dot product. I just get the first term. That's a z. And um, we've already done that integral, just with different letters. Reduce, reuse, recycle. We don't have to do it again. So um, I think this is going to be 4. And then I think this is going to be negative 4. All right. So let are there are the questions on this? Doing okay? All right. So let's see. Doing good. So let me do a let's do a slight variant on this problem. 
and let's let so let's repeat but with an h that's going to be z i minus 3 y j plus y k. So all I've done is I've changed the y component. So that means that we only have to redo these two integrals. So take a moment and do that. And then we'll compare and contrast g and h. Great. OK, so, um, so this new field h, which I kept writing as f, and I realized this should have been g, and I de kept defaulting to f, um, is just a little bit different. And so here I'm figuring the flux through the left face. The um, direction, the orientation is to the left, so that's going to be uh, a minus j hat. And so then that's going to just pick off minus 3y. So I've got nine double minuses there. And then now I've got this y kicking around. What, do I, what am I going to do with this? It's an yeah. But it's an opportunity. <laughs> so, so this is where the picture can be helpful. So here I am, and I want to know, like, along this plane, what's y? Zero. This is the opportunity. So this is zero. Yeah. So y is not a variable to be integrated over here. It's a constant. Um, here, um, I'm going to have a minus 3. And then what's y on the right on the right surface on surface D? It's two everywhere. Yep, everywhere along that plane. And then I need to do a d a dx dz. And this one's going to be minus twelve because zero to two, zero to two minus. Uh, let's see, minus minus twenty four. Yeah, definitely. In fact, maybe that's even better. I mean, because like, yeah. So, um, so Margarita was pointing out that you might want to write the dx dz and then plug in y, and that's sort of useful. I think because then it's clear, oh wait, y is not changing. It's x and z that are changing. So y is a constant. That's the problem that becomes an opportunity. What, then, you, then you look at your picture and say, what is that constant value? Aha, it's 0. That's great. Here it's 2. That's also pretty good. OK. So now let's step back and think about g and h. So what did we find for the total g flowing out of the cube? The flux out of A, the flux out of B, the flux of C, D, E, F, all of those fluxes add, added together to zero. zero. Um, what about the total H flowing out of the cube? Negative 24. OK. Um, the negative tells us that it's flowing in. OK. Yep. And so at the risk. Uh, def definitely not a J, okay. uh, or I mean, definitely not a, uh, not, not anything. It's because this is just a number. Like how much, okay. how much fluid, how many butterflies are accumulating? How many butterflies are flowing out of this cube per unit time? The answer would be minus twenty four. That means hey, butterflies are coming into this cube. So that's good news if you want butterflies. Um, so like, what's different about these two vector fields? Physically or mathematically. The y yep, the y component. <laughs> that and so and what is 
So what's another way to ask this? How could we have, is there a way we could have seen before doing all this work that this was going to be 0? Or is there a way we could have seen, maybe this is it's easier to think over here, like what made this be not 0? And so as Alvaro was saying, this is, it's something to do with y. So we added a y. What if I had added a z here? Then it would, would, then it would, still, it would still be 0. So um, so if the y component has a y dependency, that's what, right? Because if, if the y part of the field is the same here and here, well, then the y part of the field is the same here and here. Then the flux is going to be the same. So to see if there's some net flow in or out of a surface, we would have to have y, the y part varying with y, or the z part varying with z, or the x part varying with x. Um, so another way to say that, partial h2 partial y does not equal 0. So what's different? Whereas partial g2 partial y does equal 0. So previously, we, we looked at circulation integrals, another type of closed geometric shape. And we kind of wanted to know, hey, is that going to be 0 or not? And we ended up with this part, mishmash of partial derivatives that I asserted was the curl. This is sort of a preview of what we'll do next week. We're going to get a different mishmash, mishmash, uh, melange, jumble. It'll be less jumbled of partial derivatives that will tell us something about are butterflies flowing in or out of a surface or neither. Um, which one of these seems like it could describe uh, water flow? Yeah, so if, if like you, assuming there's no, so if water is just like flowing down a river or something, water is not getting created or destroyed. And so if you, if you put any little thing in a river, you better have the same amount flowing in or flowing out, otherwise water would be accumulating. But water doesn't accumulate because it's not compressible. So this would describe um, um, fluid flow, an incompressible fluid flow, whereas fluid flow can't really do this unless you have a source somewhere, like if there was somehow like a magic fountain in the middle of the space. Um, all right. So let's, let's end by looking at number, number three. And rather than doing tons of calculus, let's sort of think about this geometrically. So look at number three, try to get a geometric picture of what's going on. And then um, we'll talk talk through it and wrap up. So, so this is the electric field due to a, a point charge Q located at the origin. And so R is um, just the position vector, so x, x, y, z. And so this is always going to be pointing away from the origin. Right, so just any point in space. That's your R. That's a terrible drawing, but you're used to that. So it's pointing radially outward, straight away from the origin. And so what, if, you, if you've got a sphere, what's the relationship between this vector and the, and the sphere, like the angle here? It's, it's, so they're, they're perpendicular. It's always going straight through. So, uh, so that's ex that's that's exciting. Um, so I guess you could you know you could say e dot d a r hat if you wanted to. And then what's the what's the value of the field along the sphere? 
So let's say on sphere of radius, let's do capital R. We'll do problems 1 and 2 at the same time, or A and B at the same time. Is it what, sorry? The, 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 filter, the, <coughs> the Like the surface, yes. Well, It's gonna, it's, it's gonna matter for a moment, and then it won't matter. Okay. <laughs> so, so if we just want to know about the field, so forget this flux interval first. This is telling me that the field gets weaker the farther you get away from the origin, mm -hmm. and the gravity behaves the same way. Um, but it's the same everywhere along the surface because the radius is the same. Yeah. So I claim that on sphere of radius r, e is going to be k q, I guess, r hat over r cubed. And it's perpendicular everywhere. So that means that r, r and the field are, are parallel. And so what I claim is that this is going to be, all right, so I've got kq. I've got r over r cubed dA. OK, so you're the, well, the <laughs> so so this is this is this arrow is the electric field, and it's also the the direction of d a so like over here, these are the directions of d a perpendicular to the surface. And so the field, the blue field, was perpendicular to the surface orientation. So it's the same thing that's happening here. It's just, it's just the story is curved. The, f the field is always going straight through the sphere. And the dA is always perpendicular to the field. So if you were on, if you were on walking around this sphere, you would have the electric field coming straight up through you. It wouldn't be like coming off at an angle. Um, so this is a constant. That's exciting, because we like integrating constants compared to non-constants. So then what's the area the sur that we're integrating over? Uh, it's the surface area of a sphere. Three, no. Four pi r squared. There we go. Um, so this is going to be four pi r squared k, uh, kq r over r cubed. And the r's all go away, and we get four pi kq. No more r. And so um, let's, let me end with a couple minutes of physics. So in physics, electric fields come from charges. So you have a charge, and you've got electric fields pointing straight out from it. And so this flux integral is like you're trying to catch the electric field, like you're catching butterflies or catching water or something. And um, what this says is if you put a sphere around this, you're going to catch a certain amount of electric. This would be called electric flux. You're going to catch a certain amount of electric flux. And in fact, what this shows is it doesn't matter what the radius of the sphere is. You catch the same amount of electric flux. Um, and those of you who have had physics likely at some point in your life learned Gauss's law, which says that the total electric flux through a surface equals the total electric charge inside that surface. And this is an example of that. Um, so total flux 
through surface equals total charge inside the surface. Um, and so this means if I decided I don't want to know about a sphere. I want to know the total flux flowing out of a cube that contains Q. It's just going to be that. If I take the sphere and I make it asymmetric all of a sudden, so now the, or if I move the charge over here, that might be a nightmarish integral to do. But Gauss's law says, oh, it's still just going to be 4 pi Q. Yeah? Would it still be 4 pi uh, KQ? If it was inside of a cube? Yes. Okay. Yep. So any shape. Any shape that encloses this weird blob, cube, pyramid, you name it. How about a rectangle? Well, as long as it, it has to be a volume to, enclo to enclo in include everything. So it has to be a closed surface, like a bubble or, or something. Um, so let's see. So this is. Uh, I guess, a combination of physics and math. And we've seen that if we have a, the flux out of a surface is non-zero, it's because we have things like this. And then, so that suggests that charge, what, so this um, hodgepodge of partial derivatives that we'll learn about next week is going to be related to the presence of electric charge in physics. So this situation, if you have a net total H flowing out of a cube, this could describe an electric field. There would, there would have to be negative 24Q somewhere in this, in this cube. Um, whereas you have fluid flow, which doesn't have this sort of stuff, um, you would have the same amount flowing in as flowing out. So electric fields are not like water fields. Um, OK, so next week we'll learn about this next funny combination of partial derivatives. And we'll learn how to do differential calculus of vector fields in addition to integral calculus of vector fields. All kinds of cool stuff awaits. So I'll be in the dining hall in a couple minutes. And